Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Looking for Love on the New You Nation Network YouTube channel. We are here every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm Trey Kearney, and this is my co-host. Lamar Hall. And we are here to bridge the gap between Generation X men and Generation X black men and women to see what is the misses, what are the stops and the blocks, and how can we have happy, whole, healthy relationships by having happy, whole, healthy dialogue from a male perspective and a female perspective, a Gen X male perspective and a Gen X female perspective. And we're not here to bicker argue, but to listen to each other, to receive and to believe without going back and forth saying, no, Mar, no, no, no. When he's speaking from a male perspective and him not to chew me up and say, no, 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 all women this and that, to hear me and I'll hear him. So how's your week, Lamar? Pretty good, pretty good. How you doing? I'm good. I cannot complain. I mean, I just had my peach. I, I cooked the peach cobbler. I got to stop baking. I got to stop baking. I need to, I got to get me a husband so somebody can eat some of this stuff because I just, I can't be eating these cobblers and these cakes. Like I'm like, no. You saw me just tear that peach cobbler up. Hey, you, you can eat it. You just got to hit the gym three times a week. It's okay. That's, that's, that's a healthy balance. You know, you're not overindulging and you're just getting a little, you, and you keep working. I really out. am overindulging with the sweets. Like I've been baking like Betty Crocker. Listen, after Sunday, I'm going cold turkey. So, I mean, 52 is coming up, and I told myself I want a six pack. I don't know if it's possible, but we're oh, gonna see if we, can get, we can see if we can get there. So, it's it's gonna it's gonna I'll keep you keep your date on the progress. It is possible. It is possible. So, we're gonna get started first. We're gonna get started with some of our DMs, some of our questions from our viewers because they want to know. So, here we go with the day one and no section. I just made that up. You like that? I like it. I like it. They want to know. I got to write that down. Let me get my pen. <laughs> they want to know. They want to know. They want to know. <laughs> they want to know. Ask some questions. Ask them. Let's go. I like it. Yes, let's go. You ready? Yep, I'm ready. Don't be, don't be having these people DMing me talking about you doing too much. You, all, I'm always getting messages about you. <laughs> let, me, let me tell the viewers this. Somebody sent me a message and said, I need to get another co-host. Oh, I told you I'm Ocho. I'm Ocho. That's what that's what I am. Man, why y'all y'all not gonna make me get on another co-host? Cause be honest, like what is going on here? Like that's like y'all them telling you to get rid of me. Yeah, we can't yeah. do that. I, 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 hey, this this boat will sink real quick. <laughs> Let's read our first question of the evening. Hello, I'm in a long distance relationship. We met several years ago on vacation. Started seriously dating last year. We talked since we met, but with the distance at first, it didn't make sense to try. Him being in Washington, D.C. and me living in Texas. But we talked almost every day, so everything started to move naturally. I own a home and he rents an apartment. We are tired of the distance, so we are considering moving in together. Oh, and yes, marriage is on the table. The problem is he expects me to move to D.C. because he is the man. However, I own a home and I'm quite established here in Texas. He refuses to move here. I just need a little advice on what I should consider. Well, kudos first on making a long distance relationship work because it does take two mature adults. So kudos to that. Um, well, I, I would say this from a, man, a man's perspective. I understand, I, can't, I understand his point of view. Uh, what you probably, can he do his line of work in Texas, you know, can, can you make a, a, a seamless transition, remote work, remote? If you can, that's way one way to entice him. The other thing to entice him is you're going to have to sell your home or rent it out or keep it and go get another home together because a man of substance does not want to move to another woman's house. It's just something it just feels less than and you can't really put a a word associated with it to it. But if you have done the work and you are a, a grown man per se, that you can take care of yourself, moving in with a woman who previously has all these things and well that it is appealing and it's great to have those things, but we should acquire those things together. So keep your home, rent it out, do whatever you need to do, but build a life with this man. That, that says a little bit more so. Yes. And I got to agree with that because I have to agree with that for for the brother who has to move into her house because I'm speaking from a woman's perspective and we could get mad and put you out. So I don't know how 
she's worked on herself or how mature she is. But I know as emotional creatures, for the brothers that are out here listening who are in long distance relationships and a woman is expecting you to move in her house, I just have to give you all a warning. As a man, like Lamar said, as a grown man, you should not want to move into a home that a woman already has established, not because you think she's going to put you out, but because y'all should establish a home together and y'all should not be establishing a home together until y'all get married. I'm sorry. I got to say that too. And the other thing is for men, I'm a boy mom and Lamar is my boy and I got some brothers from another mother. And I've heard horror stories of men moving in with women and being kicked out stuff being thrown out the house and all that other stuff. So like Lamar said, maybe there's a happy medium. Maybe it's time for both of y'all to relocate to a different area. Maybe y'all can meet halfway yeah. between DC and Texas because nobody really wants to leave their comfort zone. Like if I met somebody and I would never date, I would never do long distance relationship because I know it would come to the point where I would have to probably move to where that man is. If like you said, if he's a real grown man and I want to be in New Jersey. So I might as well not do that. I might as well just say no, uh, cause Trey ain't leaving New Jersey. Yeah. I mean, that that's, those are deal breakers. So you have to do the work on yourself to know those deal breakers. So when they are proposed in front of you, that you're able to be mature enough to go, Hey, I can't do this. This is on my, this is a red flag of media and I have to walk away from that. So it's just like, and that's just respectful. And that's why you need to have those meaningful conversations in the first, you know, 48, you know, 72 hours of meeting each other. So you're not wasting each other's time anymore. You know, it's like you're too, at this age, you have nobody to be afraid of. You know, it's like, what, what are you afraid of saying? You know, you got to find out if you're compatible sooner because you don't want to waste nobody's time. You don't want to be talking about it for two years ago. Oh, you don't like peanut butter? Oh, I love peanut butter. You know, like hey, you allergic to peanut butter. I'm allergic to peanut butter. Like, oh. <laughs> you gonna almost kill somebody. <laughs> yeah, you like you better. He said, You've been eating peanut butter the whole time. <laughs> and you didn't kiss me now, my love. You rushed me to the hospital. <laughs> you killed me, woman. <laughs> but no, seriously, I just think that. For me, when it comes to long distance relationships, if you're looking for a life partner, if you're looking for somebody to spend the rest of your life with, eventually somebody's going to have to take the move. So that should be discussed or you should think about that before you even consider a long distance relationship. Are you willing to move? Both parties should think about this. Like if this if we go further with this, am I willing to move if this person doesn't want to move? And if you're not, I would not suggest a long distance relationship and I don't want a long distance relationship period. Cause I want to see my man every day. I work with a lady and she had a, a eight year long distance relationship with the man. And then she finally ended up moving to a Virginia and they together now. So, I mean, and she made it right. It took her eight years to leave her place. Her safe. Oh, yeah, it took, yeah. It really took, it took her a minute to get the confidence to, to trust and find her a job that she was willing to do. And, you know, it, it was, it was, she did all of that for a relationship. So, yeah. And I'm I mean, sure it, it took eight years because I'm sure she was like, I'm not leaving Virginia. He's going to mm -hmm. come here. So, somebody has to eventually make the move. Yeah. So, that's a conversation before everybody gets totally attached to each other to say, listen, this is moving in a direction where I think we both really are getting along. And this in three months, like this looks like something. Would you be willing to move? to where I am and vice versa. And if you both are saying, I'm not leaving, then y'all know, let's not even go any further. I, would, each other. I wouldn't even start the conversation. You get some out of town people like on, on the dating sites and stuff. And I don't even entertain those, you know, it's like I, I barely entertain if someone lives 45 minutes away from me just because it's just too, it's too much of a hassle there and back. And then if you have kids, it's just, it's too much. It's yeah. Too much. You can't, you can't do it. So you got to live 15, 20 minute, you know, distance away. And that's it. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Cause I'm not, I'm not even into long distance relationships, but to the woman, listen, this is a hard one because you don't want to leave Texas and he don't want to leave DC. So this may not end well for the two of you. I I'm just going to live in separate. I, I would, I would, it, we we all we all know Texas is probably a little bit better, you know, financially and cost of living than DC. So the the number one thing to ask is, can he still do his job? Because he's obviously a successful man 
So he wants to hang on to his career. He doesn't want to just move for the sake of love. He wants to be able to go, hey, my job is still intact. I still can maintain my life and feel good about myself. So that's the first thing that you want to identify. Then then the second is you're going to have to be flexible. Like we talked about the house. You're going to have to, you know, hey, baby, let's I'm going to use this as rental property. Don't think that this is, you know, this you had to move in with me. We're going to go build a life together and come to Texas. Come spend some time here. Let's let's do it. You know, let's see if we can do that. But I'm pretty sure he's making his decisions on his job. Oh, that's good, Lamar. And and uh, this is why we like to do this. We like to have these Gen X conversations because I wouldn't think that he was making the decision based on his job. And we need to hear that as women, when we're dating somebody long distance, or even when we're dating somebody, period, that a man, a black man is really making decisions based on his stability and his job. Well, that's we we had, I mean, at the age that I am, I have a certain lifestyle that I have to maintain. So I can't just pick up for love and go gamble everything on that, you know, and you're looking for me to be the sole provider or the most of the primary provider, at least, you know, we're not talking 50 50, you know, you're talking about 75 25 in most cases. So it, that man has to be comfortable in himself to make that decision to be able to go. I financially can still hold down, you know, the house with minimal help. We're not saying I need all of your, right. we need minimal help to maintain a, a better lifestyle than either one of us had. So that's, that's what I'm, you know, what I would do in the situation when it would be like, listen, I got 75% of it. You got 25 of it. And the under 25, we save, invest, whatever we want to do with. It. Right. I like that minimal. Yes. I like that. Cause I don't, I don't believe in 50, 50. I don't believe that. I believe a man is supposed to be able to maintain a house by himself, period. A, a lifestyle by himself, a home by himself, the basic necessities. Because people get mad at me when I say the man is supposed to take care of the house. I'm saying that a man should be able to pay the mortgage, the car note, the car insurance, the electricity, the internet, the basic necessities, right? right. At the level of his salary. Because if right. I'm a teacher, I understand that a teacher's salary is a teacher's salary, right? If right. I meet a person who's a manager or a district manager at Walmart or a person who's a CEO, I know what their level of their salary is. So I'm expecting them to be able to maintain at the level of their salary. Now, if I decide I want to live above my spouse's salary, then I have to kick in because I know that a teacher doesn't make a salary I'm going to be living in a mansion. There you go. So that's what I mean by I think that a man should be able to maintain a household at the level of his salary because we know what we're getting into when we meet you. We know, you know, what your job, when you, your girl, you, she know what your job is. She know what your salary is. Right. So she's not expecting you to live like Shaq. Right. And if right. she is, then boo, you need to kick in if you want to live in a house like that with a pool and a basketball court mm -hmm. and go arts. But this is what I can do on my own. And if you're right. willing to accept that, then you ain't got to kick in. Right. But if you talk about you want I don't think stuff. I don't think if you present it that way is, you know, 75, 25, you know, minimal, you know. Right. And and, and letting them know that we are upgrading our life. Yes. You know, so the house, you know, let's say, so if you lived in an apartment and I live in a townhouse, now we're going to get a minimal house. So basically you look at it and say what you were paying in rent and what I was paying in rent, you combine that, that's the house you can pay. And that's not even increasing a thing. Right. You know, like, you know and it's like, so, I mean, that's, that's easy, you know, for a woman to just do that. So, but, you know, the man should be presented and saying, listen, the lights, the cable, I got, I got all of that stuff. The, the groceries, I got all of that. You know, but here's what your 25 percent, 25 percent represents. And then whatever, whatever else you have after that, that's yours. Right. So but you that's, not, that's not the way the conversations are going yeah. nowadays. So this is why you saying that is disturbing to some men that what do you mean? You got the house and you got the cable, you got the food like they're coming to tape. Like, well, what is she going to do with her money? If you are no, the right woman. She going to kick in and the money's going to be on vacations. She going right. she going to say, "Lamar, give me your your ATM card cuz I'm going to the supermarket." Yeah. She going to take her card out while she at the supermarket. People right. and it's, so you have a you, you have a joint account together that she is allotted X amount of money. Let's say she brings home $4,000 a month. 2,000 of that is going to go. So 1,000 of each check that you get immediately goes into this account and I will pull from that account 
if I need any assistance on anything else in the house. But you don't have to worry about anything else. So the other two thousand dollars that you have, do whatever you want right. to. You want to upgrade your car? Go ahead. I got the car insurance. You know, right. like, you know. So it's like the, the lights, the cable, the food, all of that's taken care of. So because now you, I believe this because I believe that the, you already doing that now. Right. So why would when a woman come and you like, okay, I'm gonna need you to give me twenty five dollars on that internet. I'm gonna yeah, need yeah, no, on that that's, lights. that's easy. You know, that's easy. So it's like you know, I it, it's not it's not that's not rocket science to me. You know, for people to do that, it's just like whatever her salary is, take the appropriate amount to put it into an account that she can see you're not doing no funny business with it. Right. And that's where you pay all the bills from. Right. You know, then she has money and you don't she don't have to ask you to get her nails or hair or buy a purse or whatever. So, hey, look, that's your money. That come out your money. Right. So that boy says, I pay the mortgage and car insurance. She pays utilities. Finley said, I need a Lamar. <laughs> <laughs> don't we all? We just want to be treated fairly, just like the men want to be treated fairly. I think that's one of the misses with Generation X. Everybody wants to be treated fairly, but we're getting so much negativity to fight each other instead of having rational conversations about what's realistic for the two people that are together. Like, what's the reality of this? Well, that, that, that requires a lot of transparency, which we both know requires a lot of inner growth. So it's like if you want a certain type of life, you got to manifest it. And it starts with you. So you got to really say, hey, I got some things I need to work on, whatever your triggers are. Have you dealt with your past? Have you been to therapy? Those things matter. And I'm going to stress it because I've done it. I've walked through that and I see the change and I wouldn't trade this piece for anything. And it's mm -hmm. like, if that's truly what you crave and you want to be happy and you want to feel like purpose, go get that therapy. I promise you, you it, 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 you've done worse things in, with your money. I guarantee you. I know that's right. It'll change your life. So we're going to go to our next question because, you know, our time be like, zoom, we just be like, yeah. what happened? how do we get here? <laughs> so. My transmission is shot. I told my man is going to cost almost four thousand dollars to replace. He did not offer to help me, even though I said I didn't have all of it. So I asked him, asked him, and he said he can't. He has other obligations, and right now that would stretch him. I'm done. He sleeps with me, but can't help me fix my car. Am I wrong? So, are they living together? Sounds like sounds like they're living together. Sounds okay. like it, yes. It kind of sounds like I couldn't really put it down, but it kind of sounds like the let's let's say let's say they're living together. Right. They're living together, and a four thousand dollar transmission. She must be driving a Lamborghini or something, because I mean <laughs> that seems a little excessive to me. But what do I know? I have replaced the transmission in a BMW, and it wasn't four thousand dollars. So, oh, okay. You might want, you might want to get a second opinion on that one first. Um, if they are sharing bills and they do see a future with one another, I would say that it's an investment in your wife. This is the life that you're going to put together. So yes, he should help. Um, but there should have already been an understanding that the two of you guys are living under the same roof, making decisions together. And those are going to be good and bad decisions. And Again, leading back to the being a financial leader, is he leading the household? If he is leading the household, then, you know, then great. Then, you know, like I said, there are plans, you know, like one, just for myself. I'm just speaking for myself. I use it's a 75, 25 type of rule. And, and that's just because I'm older. I don't think that, you know, I would be the same if I was a 30 year old married. You know, we're going to throw everything in a pot together and we're going to do it. But when you're more established, when you have done you know worked on yourself professionally and you're at a certain point you don't want to be asking anybody for money and stuff like that so i think that yes it he should help he should offer you know and if he hasn't then it may be he said he can't it would stretch him but they but he didn't come up with a solution he didn't try to figure out like how can i help this solution a man a man is a problem solver so why is he not if he loves you and you guys are living together and you have this plan this life together why is he why is there no solution 
He can't just be like, I don't have the money. That's, you know, but figure it out yourself. Sorry, partner. You know, you, you live in more like a roommate. You're not living like a like a union, because if you if you were his wife, he would have to figure it out. Right. But let me say this. She said, you know, I sleep with him and he got basically he got the nerve to not help me as women. We have to be accountable for the fact that because we sleep with a man, he doesn't owe us anything. I just want to get that on the table that because you sleep with a man doesn't mean he's obligated to I pay. Mean, is, that, is, that how she, is that how she, I mean, she did say that. You did refresh my memory, but is she painting the picture of that? Is that why she thinks he should be doing it? No, she that? just said, I, I'm, I'm done. I sleep with him and he's not going to help me with my car. Like, what I mean, that's not a, I mean, again, I mean, what, what a, I, 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 try, I love talking to women. I, I, I generally do. And it's just because it's so fascinating on why you make the decisions that you, that you make. And women should be so particular of the attention that they give men. And it's, why would you entertain a man that just doesn't fit your criteria? I mean, it, I mean, it has, it has a lot more to say about what your truly your intent is, you know, and, and you, you kind of just settle, you know, and it's like, why would you do that? You know, I don't, I don't understand that from a woman's point of view is that you enter, why entertain certain men that you don't, you don't, feel any attachment for or anything like that because men should be on a journey to get, find, figure who they are or what they want to be you know and grow as men you know we don't usually figure that out to our late 30s so it's you know it's it's trial and error you know and that's you want that in a man you know that that uh, that he's gone through some things he's had adversities and hopefully at, he's at the peak of his career he's on the way looking up those are that's what men should aspire to. Do we always get there? No. And that's why men should talk to men. You know, and, and if you have someone that you admire, let them know you admire them and learn from that person. It's OK. We all had to do it. We all had to humble ourselves to somebody to want to get to the next level. And the people that are successful and are genuine, they'll give you advice gladly because they know it's lonely at the top. Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Okay. We have lost connection. I can't believe I talked the whole time. It's okay. We have lost connection for a couple of minutes. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> we're doing good here. We're doing good. So I'm going to, we're going to go. So again, I just think that women think that men are obligated to do things for them because we're sleeping with y'all. Like, I just think that that has to be taken off the table or then it becomes transactional. Like, once you say you owe me for sleeping with you, then I'm a prostitute. You know what I'm saying? That's how I feel. If I tell a man, oh, you're not going to give me no money or whatever, I'm sleeping with you, then am I really selling sex or what are we doing here? You know what I'm saying? I'm just... Uh, it becomes it becomes very transactional. I mean, and, you know, men go, oh, I don't, I don't pay for this. I mean, you pay for it in other ways. You know, it's just you, you are paying, you know, for that. You know, fortunately, today's society is... If you the, the prettier the woman, the more money it's going to cost you in other things, whether it's dinners or trips or gifts or whatever. You're you're entertaining this woman. So, you know, I saw something uh, the other day. Stephen A was like, find you a hard seven. He said he said. Oh, no. no. And I actually I actually thought it was a good comparison. Uh, he said pretty women are problems. He said the ones that really get the attention that, you know, it's a lot of unwanted. And I've, I've had. The, I've had the pleasure of seeing both sides of the fence and them really, really, really pretty women that you walk in and everybody looks at and everybody wants to know how you got her attention. And that's, that's a lot of stress on the guy. So, it's, but some guys, you know, my money, my, my, my pockets wasn't that big, you know, so my, my pockets are a little immature. So, you know, yeah, yeah so I, 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 I gracefully bow down. I'm like, Hey, listen, I can't compete in this arena with these, with these type of chicks, man. So I, I said, I listen, I could date Drea for one month. <laughs> oh wow! Ooh. That's it. That's Drea, it. My, my, my money, my money run out in one month. Because <laughs> yeah, you know, she she's coming into it knowing that there's yeah, a certain yeah, thing she, that she she's her, looking for. Oh, she did her homework. You know, I feel sorry for them these younger boys too. Oh yeah, she that no. Some women ain't gonna date anybody that can't provide a certain lifestyle. 
No, I mean, I mean, there's certain qualities that a woman looks in a man that she what she likes, she wants. And there's certain things that a man wants, you know, and, not, and, and most of it for us is superficial. It is it's based on looks. But it's also about accessibility is how you treat that man. And when he's around his peers, so he you're giving off this energy that I got a good one. So if a, if a guy has a good woman standing next to him and he's around his fellas and she's not entertaining, she's not smirking, she's into him and she's being feminine, man, that speaks volumes with his peer group. Mm. Well, you that's know? good to know. That's good to know. I'm going to pull our video up. So I have a video that was um, sent to me and they wanted to know our opinion on this video. So if you just tuned in, you're tuned into Looking for Love on New You Nation Network. We're here every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm your host, Trey Kearney, and this is my co-host. Lamar Hall. And we just are trying to bridge the gap between Generation X men and Generation X women so that we can have happy, healthy, whole relationships and just really basically learn how to listen to each other, to hear and to learn instead of to listen to respond. So I'm going to pull a video up that somebody sent to me and they wanted our opinion on this. Let me see if I can pull it up really quickly. Let's see if it comes. It's betrayal. I am. Let's call cheating what it is. It's betrayal. I am sick and tired of hearing people saying, well, these are the things you did and that's why your man cheated on you. F you. Absolutely not. Somebody cheats on you, they betrayed you. They did something. And this nonsense about, well, if you'd done more of this and that, absolutely not. If that person had a problem with how you were showing up in the relationship, they had the opportunity to have a conversation. Their form of betraying you to make that point, hell no. You, you need to hear that again or you're good. No, I got it. I got it. Okay. Hey, listen, I, I, I have no problem stating that I cheated. So is it a form of betrayal? Absolutely, it's a form of betrayal. Uh, but there, in life, there is a cause and there is an effect. So we can't right. discount that. So the lack thereof, you know, cheating, like you said, is a symptom of a bigger problem. So it's just easier to satisfy the flesh easier. That's why it's the easiest thing to do is to cheat. You know, the, the but I, I believe this, and the only the thing that bothered me about her conviction is that you have to consider that there are many people who had affairs who cheated, and I'm never excusing cheating. Cheating is wrong. It is betrayal. I cheated on my ex husband. That's how our marriage ended. But again, there were convers. Lots of people have conversations that fall on deaf ears because she said if a person is having a problem they, need, they have an opportunity to have a conversation with that person one i've interviewed over going on over 200 men on this subject so i don't know if she did her research to sit down and have a conversation with the men not to excuse their behavior for cheating but to see what caused or what was the breakdown because most of the men that i've shared or that have shared with me have said i have been talking till i'm blue in the face and this woman is secure in knowing that if I'm not going anywhere because I don't want to lose everything. So we have to think about the different dynamics. And, and yes, cheating is betrayal. And if we take it out of the context of physical cheating and we think about women who cheat emotionally, there would be more women who cheat emotionally than men who cheat physically because men check out of relationships and a woman doesn't have anybody to talk to. And she's talking to her husband and saying, I need to talk to you. I need us to talk. I mean, and he's checked out. So she ends up having an emotional affair, which is just as bad as a physical affair. But we think about the physical more than we think about the fact that women are out here having emotional affairs in DMs. Women are out here having emotional affairs on their jobs because their need is not met because cheating is cheating, physical cheating or emotional cheating. But cheating is a symptom of a bigger problem. So if there's a woman that's kicking with a man at work and she is lacking attention from her husband and she's had this conversation, you're working too much, I need time with you, and he's falling on. So people are having conversations, ma'am, but you can't force somebody to change the behaviors as many conversations as you have. And yes, cheating is betrayal and all of that F you stuff. And we have to get to the core of the problem. And that's why we're having these conversations. 
because you can't just throw the ball out there and say, oh, cheating, people who cheat, or this, people who cheat, or that. Let's sit down and say to the person, um, hey, we all know that you betrayed your husband or you betrayed your wife, and that's totally wrong. And being two people who cheated, who have talked about this before, we totally own up to that. We totally own that there is no reason for, no, you should not cheat, no, no, no. But again, the symptoms were there. If your wife, I know men who told me their wife didn't sleep with them for years. I wasn't gonna put up with it for years, but it, it was very inconsistent. And and also I'll, I'll say this: I think ninety percent of men's problems within what they're dealing with with their wife could be handled with some head. <laughs> You're not going there tonight. <laughs> I'm just saying, just some consistent, sporadic head. He's dealing with you, man. Like like if. If he knows that we can have sex three times a week and I get hit three times a week and then I get some random wake me up in the middle of the night or the, or the early morning hit, you're not getting no problems out of him. Now, he's not going to let you run y'all in debt or nothing like that, but he, man, he'll be like, man, I'm not tripping on her, man. He's going to be, he, he, oh, he's going to be relaxed the whole time. Right. That's what I said. Women, if women knew what other women don't do, Y'all, man, it, it's like in certain, like myself, I tell women, like if you cool, listen to him, listen to this this man talk. Let him tell you his childhood. Let him open up to you because if he can start trusting you with that type of stuff, then guess what follows? He starts to be like, okay, she's like my my partner, my homie, you know. And then y'all in love falls at it. Y'all, y'all just want to skip steps, and you know, we all know if you jump too many steps, you're gonna trip yourself and fall down. You know, how hard is up to you. So. Right. And, and, and again, it's a matter of if we sat down and talked to, and I, I've done this too. I've talked to side chicks because they can relate to me. Because I, when I was had, when I had an affair, I was having an affair with a married man. So side chicks were talk calling me, wives were calling me, and we were just having conversations. And the wives, the, the side chicks, I wrote a book, uh, uh, hashtag No Side Chick, and had a side chick proof your home. Do you know that the wives did not buy the ebook? It's still on my site just to tell you how to side chick proof your home. Do you know that the side chick, you know, a side chick DM me and said, Hey, I bought your book to make sure I don't end up like his wife. This is what a side chick said to me. She said, Oh, let me go. I went and bought your ebook to make sure that I do the things that your ebook said so I won't end up like the wife. Now, the men, the men have side chicks, right? Because they're doing everything you used to do before you checked out. And yeah. you don't, women, I'm, I'm like, this is not to say, like she said, oh, you can't say you didn't do enough for this and enough of that. You actually can say that. You can. Like you actually can say, my wife doesn't sleep with me. My husband doesn't talk to me. Uh, my wife doesn't support me. My wife doesn't encourage me. My hus husband doesn't come home. You actually can say a person wasn't doing the things that they should be doing. Still cheating is betrayal, but you have to, especially in a marriage, let's talk about marriage right now, especially in a marriage, you have to fulfill your spouse's needs if you don't want them to go outside of the home to get their need met. And, and everybody's <laughs> needs are going to be at a different level. So if you marry a dude that needs head four times a week, and he was getting it when he was single because he had random chicks. Now he now the pressure's all on you. You can't you can't expect him to change his habits. Those and are his, those are, and that's what he's expecting. So if you're not willing to step up, then I mean, what are, what are y'all truly asking of each other? You know, it's like why why would you do that? You're putting you oh now he go he's used to getting hit four times a week, but now he with you being monogamous and he only get one time a week, or when you feel like it. Right. Again, and then you, get, then you get mad when you cheat on you. Come on. Once we see. make that, once we make a commitment to be monogamous, right? Once we say it's only going to be me and you, and women, a lot of women want to be monogamous. They don't want their man with anybody else. If you're a woman who wants to be monogamous with a man, then you're obligating yourself to fulfill his needs. Point blank, period. You cannot think that you want him to be monogamous, but you don't fulfill his needs at home, like you're not being intimate with him. 
You can't say I want you to be monogamous and then not fulfill the need. I'm sorry, it doesn't work that way. The person is going to go outside of their marriage. The person is going to go outside of their home. Say it a little louder for the people in back. <laughs> right. If you, if, you want to be, if you want to be monogamous, if you tell a person we're going to be monogamous or if a person tells you we're going to be monogamous and you guys agree to that, the man and the woman, it is yep. the man's obligation to fulfill his woman needs. If he don't fulfill her needs, then he is breaching a contract. And if she doesn't fulfill his needs, he's she's breaching a contract. And we could this woman said, oh, if your needs ain't being met. You can have a conversation. People are having conversations saying my needs are not being met. My mm -hmm. needs are not being met. My needs are not being met. My need How long do you think that a person is going to sit and say my needs are not being met before you say what she's saying? Uh, we could you should have had a conversation. No, I had conversations with you for years and you just made told me like it or lump it. So I lumped it. You know what what I've tried to practice in my relationships is trying to create a safe space where you feel comfortable to bring up uncomfortable things. So if there's something that I'm not doing or I started doing and I'm kind of falling off, that we have this space where we can be honest with each other. And it's not taken, you know, personal. Don't get your feathers ruffled. You know, don't bring all the attention into it. Just be like, hey, you know what? I kind of noticed that, you know, you haven't been hugging me as much. Right. Like, oh, I haven't. Like, oh, I think I'm, you know, doing, oh, you want more. And it's just the transparency of the relationship and just being able to to talk. And and it just, it just builds, it's a, it's a great foundation that you would just build on and, and we're building on it. And it's just, I don't know, it's, just, it's scary to be honest like this in a relationship. And you're just kind of like, wow, you know, like this is, is, is really cool. I mean, it, it just kind of blows you away that when two adults do the work on themselves and they get to a point that y'all can accomplish it, but it, it takes a lot of work individually and then collectively to do it. You know, so it's just, I don't That's know. I'm learning. Symptoms, right? Because cheating happens long before the bedroom. Yeah. People check out, people check out long before the cheating even happens. There are symptoms all along the road that people don't address until the biggest symptom comes, and that's the cheating. There's there's been we're not sleeping together. There's been we don't talk to each other. There's been we don't go on date night anymore. Like all of these symptoms that are not being addressed. The only time people normally want to, I'm speaking for women. The only time women usually want to address the symptoms is when the symptom is the biggest symptom and that's cheating. You're not addressing the symptoms along the way where you're not, you know, hugging him or whatever. And then all of a sudden, you know, I have women who come to me like, I didn't see this coming. Yes, well, you did. Yeah, you're not paying attention a lot. And then a lot of people, and, and it, it, that door swings both ways that people stop stop learning their partner. And you should always you should always be learning each other because we're, we're always this work of art is growing. And it's, you know, you never stop, you know, wanting to build upon yourself and unlock another door. And that person that you've chosen to spend your life with they should be standing there taking in all of this new data, trying to figure out who you're trying to become. Like, who I, you know, can I, how, what can I do? How can I maneuver with you? And having these deep conversations. And I mean, that's, that's just, it's dope to me. You know, I, I just, I really had never experienced anything like that. And it's just, I don't know, you know, it just, and it just, it just makes you just look at life a whole lot, a lot different. You know, and I, I told somebody before 25 years of my life, I gave to this woman and it wasn't a bad life. I just knew that it wasn't all the way fulfilled. It just didn't feel like I got to the top of the mountain and it wasn't her fault. It was just, I had, I knew I had to grow. And now I can see myself climbing the mountain again. I'm not at the top, but I'm getting to the point where I'm like, ah, I am, I'm climbing again to where I was just stuck. I was just, I couldn't go no farther. Right. And it's, it's a different feeling because everybody thought you was crazy when when I was when I was there. They're like, why, why, why? Like they like, there's no more mountain. I was like, nah, I'm telling you, there's more mountain. And they're like, nah, nah, nah. I'm like, let me show you. And now people going like, dang, dog. Like I, I see, I see it in you. It's like that, that, you know. Now, now you start hearing other people, you know, that you've known for years, going like, man, I just want some peace. I just want some right. Peace. And you're there already. Yeah, and you and you and you see it, and, 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 and but you know what? They identify it in you. They they see it in you and going like, 
Man, this show looks nice over there, man. You know, you ever go out to dinner with somebody and they food look better than yours? He's like, man, I sure messed up. I wore the wrong thing. <laughs> If you, just tuned in, if you just tuned in, you're tuned into Looking for Love. We are on the New You Nation Network YouTube channel. You can find us on the New You Nation Network YouTube channel every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time talking about relationship topics between Generation X men and Generation X women. And we're talking about right now the symptoms of cheating and never saying it's the person's fault that got cheated on, but cheating is a symptom of a bigger problem. And in relationships, we have to, like Lamar said in so many words, when you see something, you have to say something. When you see that you're not hugging each other anymore, when you see the conversations getting short, when you see your husband coming home later and later. But as women, I learned this along my journey of talking to women, of coaching women, that we would rather build a case against the man to prove that you're doing something wrong Instead of when you see the evidence, the first sign of evidence, the coming home late, instead of nipping it in the bud, you, you're taking on, you're on the calendar like he came home late Monday, he came home late Wednesday, Saturday, he didn't. Then you're looking at how many times he turned his phone down. And then you're looking at he doing a new, a new he brought home Pringles. He never eats Pringles. Where's he eating Pringles at? Instead of when you see something, <laughs> say something. You, got, you got your... Uh... Dustin kid out detective. Listen, no, no, this is how we get when things start to, to shift, right? Because women always say, Oh, I didn't even see this coming. Yes, you did, because you got a whole box of evidence. You didn't see it, you saw it coming. You didn't stop it when it started. You didn't stop it. You didn't start being intimate with your husband again or your wife, or you didn't have the conversation of why are you coming home late? Like you just ignored the signs until it got to the big sign. And you had enough evidence to present and say, you, you, what are you doing? What is this? Who's this? I see you're doing this. Instead of nipping it in the bud that first night, even when we get into disagreements with our spouses at this age, we should be able to not go to bed mad. People are in homes that are not speaking to each other, Lamar, silent treatment for weeks. Where do you think that's going to lead? Who do you think that that person, man or woman, who do you think that what they're going to do? They're going to go talk to the person on their job. Like, you ain't talking to me at home. So when I go to work, I talk to my work husband. I talk to my work wife. I don't need to talk to you. I got people outside to talk to. So this is why we can't let these things happen in our house, because cheating is a symptom of a bigger problem. And cheating is the last thing that happens. So you had a whole bunch of stuff along the journey that led up to this cheating. And this is the part where we as men and women who are on the other side of the cheating have to say, where was the breakdown in the relationship and what was my part? Period. Not that he stuck his penis in somebody else. That's it. He did that. He did that. Or not that she sat on somebody's penis. She did that. But the fact of where was the breakdown in the relationship before penises and vaginas got involved? Right? <laughs> Don't I love it, man. I love it. Man. I love it when you come out your shell. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Way after. I, I'm absolutely 1000% on board with you. Right. So we got to really just own up to the part of the breakdown in a relationship as the cheater. And we got to own up to the breakdown of, of the relationship as the person who was offended. What was my part in this? What did I expect? When you go to therapy or coaching and they start to ask questions and, and the, the guy or the woman says, we haven't had sex in seven months. Well, Eureka, what did you expect to happen? If but Okay. So I, I have a, when do women as in, as uh, you know, you're speaking on a small portion of women, not all women, when do women understand in the, in the, some part of the relationship they can control their man with sex when you become intelligent <laughs> when you know that i i have done work on myself and i've i've worked with other people right and i've listened to men i've listened to men say we are simple creatures right a lot of times we don't want to listen to men when a man says i'm a simple creature feed me f me and leave me alone leave me alone 
give me my piece. When when we hear men say that, instead of us taking it into stock and instead of us saying, is it really that simple? It's not complicated. We are. We want to make it more than feed me, F me, and leave me alone. We want to make it about us. I hear men. I'm like, if that's all it take, yeah. okay. But Give it to him in abundance. Give it to him in abundance to the point where he goes like, man, what's wrong with this woman? Right. She see me all the time. She's sexually taking care of me all the time where I'm, I almost need a time out sometimes. That, that's what I'm saying. I, I used to tell my ex-wife, do it to the point where I tell you to stop. Whoa. Just, I mean, just give it to me. Give it all to me. Like, if I tell you I like chocolate cake, I'm, I'm going to jump it down your throat. Take it off. <laughs> and see if you can fulfill my appetite. If you can't, then we need to have another conversation. Wow. If you can't give your all and keep up with my my appetite. So so if now you're, you're going to ask me to slow down and don't run as fast. Right. So, so, so what, so what, what is enticing to me in that scenario? So we have someone who said some people have it all and still just choose to act on their opportunities. Hold on. I'm going to answer that too. Men don't open up to their woman because they're afraid it will be used against them. I feel the more about climbing the mountain again. Others tell you there's no mountain. It's there. What if you address an issue or ask him to open up to you and he never does? If I'm going to say this and then I'll let Lamar answer if I'm wrong. If he doesn't open up to you when you ask him anything and he doesn't feel vulnerable to open up to you because you didn't create a safe space for him. That's, what, that's exactly what I was going to say. Because you made him feel like, you made him feel some kind of way. And, and if, if he's not opening up to you, there's another conversation to have of asking why are you not opening up to me instead of uh, trying to make him? So I, I have a, I have a, a challenge and, and okay. I would love to hear the feedback from this. In the next two days, every woman listening, go to your man and have him put his head in your lap while y'all watch TV or y'all just sit around and talk. Give him 30, 45 minutes, his head in your lap and you just rub his head. And see the demeanor of that man. So let us know. Hit us back, DM us, you know, email us. Let us know. I'm I'm just very curious to see if what what is your man's feedback going to be. Don't don't tell him nothing about it. Just do it. Well, I want to know. I don't have no man, but I want to know from all the women who do. So your challenge is when your man is sitting on the couch watching TV to walk in there quietly sit next to him and direct him to lay his head on your lap and rub his head and see what your response is. See what his response is without saying anything. Just take note and come back and tell us. Right, Lamar? Yep. Okay, ladies, we got a challenge. We got a challenge. We got one more question that we're going to get into. Should we do one more? Because we, yeah, yeah, we got time. Yeah, we got time. Okay, so this one says health insurance. My girl is mad at me because I won't put her on my health insurance. We are not married. We've only been together for a year. I have a corporate job. She's an entrepreneur. She makes good money. I'm not comfortable doing that. I can feel the tension between us when she slides it in the conversations or when she has a doctor's appointment. Then she's mad all over again. I really like her, but this is draining me when it comes up. I said no. She had the nerve to say, well, your grown kids are on your insurance. My children are 18 and 23. I told her my kids are my responsibility. Her response was, I'm not your responsibility. Okay. So if they live together, let's just assume that they live together. And she's, what would she do if you were not in the pictures first? So for her to think that you are obligated to do that, that's that's not fair. Um, now, if you want to create a business deal out of it and you want to pay a portion of it or it, whatever it's going to cost you, now you have a way better health insurance than any other, op, you know, any other thing you would have to go get by yourself. The premium is going to be a lot more. 
So that may be a way to present it as well. Say, hey, is there any way you can put me on your health insurance? Let me know what it's monthly and I'll pay for it. It's not, by no way obligates you that we're married or whatever the case may be. I just want some type of better coverage than I currently can get. And see, see the response you might get. I guess I'll keep talking, but yeah, but yeah. I mean, it, it's 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 a tough one, but if you love this woman, you can help her, and if you can help her, it's a good thing to do. I mean, it, I mean, but it, it just really comes back to you. Do you care about her? Do you see a future with her? But you can, you if if you love her, you as a man, you should want to help the person you're sharing your life with. Um, but on your health insurance, like what if? Um, but I mean, we, we could we could frame it a way. If she, I mean, I would be open to listen if a woman came to me and said, you know, hey, I don't have health insurance. What will it cost? And, and I'll give you the money for it. But but as easy as it is to put her on. If they break up, he got to go through this whole process. Well I, mean, uh, well, I mean, it just depends. I mean, they only been together a year. I mean, I don't know if they are living together, whether, you know, are they talking marriage? You know, this and that. I mean. I mean, I'm not a big component of wasting a lot of time. I mean, obviously, we talked about it at our age. I'm not gonna waste. I'm not gonna waste three years with you. You know, I'm, I'm, not, putting a, I'm not putting a man on my health insurance that I'm not married to. I'm sorry if he comes to me and say, "Hey, Trey." Well, a man shouldn't be asking you to do that. Well, you know, I mean, why should a woman? Why? Why should this man be? Put well, I mean, I mean, historically, if they're gonna get married, she's gonna be on, on his insurance anyway. So. When they get married, right? So, but I'm saying, but if you're not having those conversations, then you said you got to start asking yourself, what are you doing now? He can't randomly just be putting every girl he dates on his insurance. I mean, I I dated I dated a woman. I put her on my car insurance. You know, right. and, but it, but it was it was just a better it was a better business deal because I knew my rates were better. So it's just you know why do you need to pay two hundred fifty when you can pay a hundred? You know, it's like. Well, you good. You better. I'm not. I'm not putting a man on my insurance, and, and and vice versa. I don't think that a person should put a woman on their insurance if they're not married. Even if you're talking about marriage, a lot of times people are talking about marriage that never get married. Like people are just it's out there, and then all of a sudden, you know, two months later, you break up because you find out. Oh, okay. I didn't know that was going to show up, but it's so much easier to do things. And so much harder to get it reversed. So I don't think that he's wrong for saying no. And I think, again, it's his choice. And I really think that women feel like they have this sense of entitlement, right? That I'm with you. I'm sleeping with you. I'm your girl. And then she said, your grown kids is on your health insurance. Those are my kids. And he said his kids are 16. The women need to understand. Stop doing that. Stop. Stop doing that. Don't, stop. Women need to stop doing that. You know, bringing up their kids, bringing up their ex-wives. Or this, man, that the man don't want to talk about his past. Stop bringing that up. That is that's just low blow, hitting below the belt. You know, don't do it. You know, don't 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 even practice it. Because once you do it once, you're going to do it again. And then those type of cheap shots are damaging to a man who's trying to maybe either correct his behavior, be a better version of himself. And you keep trying to take him back to that past life. And he's Those not, are my kids. Yeah, you see, yeah, don't, don't bring up, don't bring up kids, don't bring up X, Y's or what, whatever he's giving you in confidence. You know, that's why men don't open up. And I think somebody said that earlier. It's like men don't really open up because y'all, y'all use it when it's not supposed to be used. You know, and I just experienced that, you know, with my ex-wife, you know, two weeks ago, you know, arguing through text, you know, it's like, like, man, how we get up on this? And, you know, and the whole thing was I just kept my calm because I just I don't let nobody take me there. I was like, hey, OK, thank you. Have a good day. And I just left right. it in bed, you know, and then I blocked her. And it's like, we don't need to talk. You're like, yeah, you're like, you're. Oh, you're. listen to this. The um, handyman 183 said, depending on what state you're in, that's acknowledging marriage. And if they break up, have to hold on. You got to finish the rest of that. He got it. And then this other guy said he got to wait a year to remove her. 
Oh yeah, probably the next sign up period. So. No, 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 no. You're not my. Wife. I mean, it is it is serious business, but the, those are requiring serious conversations, and and you obviously you don't do it for somebody. You don't have these type of conversations. Well, he said no, so clearly for me. Yeah, so if, he, if he's saying no, she has to respect it, and he, you know, if he has to keep talking to her about it, then she clearly isn't a woman that's not going to follow your direction. So, cut and again, I'm, I'm saying this: his kids are 18 and 23. They're probably still in college. This oh, yeah. college age, so they're going to stay on his insurance until the if 26. she knew anything that they would be on his insurance till they're twenty six. Like so, to talk about my, your kids, you don't, you don't bring up you don't bring up kids, you don't bring up those type of things because this is not a competition. It's not oh you get allocated this, you get oh you you my girl or you get allocated the same amount as my kid. No, come on, stop that. All right, you don't even all your needs are getting met. Don't bring up my kids. You know, it's like don't don't do that. Don't think that. She's getting something that you're not, or you getting something that she's not. So I've had those situations, especially when I dated younger. You know, my daughter's like, you give it to those girls, and you know, and I don't get. It. I said, have you ever not gotten what you wanted? Right. I right. Said, you know, if I'm having a conversation, oh, I didn't give you this because of her, then yeah, you have a right to be mad, but that's not the case. So don't bring those conversations up in, in arguments. It's, it's, it's just a bad look. Right. But yeah, he, he put his foot down, respect it. Right. And and you can't again, but unless there's if there's marriage involved, right? Like this is this is where you have to have conversations with a person that you're gonna marry who has adult children or who has grandchildren. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna get married, your your things, your resources are gonna become one. Right. And you can't just be giving your grown daughter money that because she wanna get a purse, or you can't be giving your grown daughter money because or your grown son because they keep getting in trouble. Because it's affecting me now as your wife. Now, girlfriends, don't say nothing to be or boyfriends, don't say nothing to be about my kids. But when we're about to merge as one and we're about to merge our bank accounts and we're about to merge our life and our mortgages at stake and our car notes, and you have a grown adult kid that's asking for this and asking for that, we do have to have those conversations. But in this instance, we you're my girl and we've been together, we've been together a year. We've only been together for a year. I have a corporate job. She has entrepreneur. You don't say anything about what I'm doing for my kids. Period. I, Point blank. I, I agree. Not ever, but as long as we're boyfriend and girlfriend. That's well, I mean, yeah, and, and and anybody that's in that situation or going into that, you know, you need to have financial, you know, relationship, you know, kind of goals and be like, you know, how do you pay your bills? What do you do here? You know, you need to really understand and be like, this is, this is how I, this is how I do it. How do you set yourself up? Because somebody's got to be the driver, you know, of the car, you know, and you, right. know, you can't take turns and who's driving because somebody has to be financially literate. In a, right. whoever, I feel like whoever is smarter in that area. Right. Because right. financially I would, I would let my husband handle the finance. Yeah, and, and you want the you want the man to do it, but some men don't do it. My dad is like that. He doesn't he doesn't care, but he comes from a very old school where you know he gets his paycheck on Friday, he comes home, he gives it to his give it to my mom. And you know, right. he didn't think didn't think much about it. Get him a six pack and he's he's out the door, you know. And that that was how simple he was. Right. Um, you know, and he's still, you know, at 70 years old, he, he's still the same way. He just like as long as my cell phone work and my cable is on. <laughs> I'm good. I don't care what you do with that check. <laughs> as long as the mortgage is paid and we got a rule. Yeah. He said, he said, the day I click on this TV that it don't work and my, my cell phone don't work or ain't no my favorite food or drinking in the refrigerator. We got a problem. We got a problem then. He said, until then, he said, hey, it's all kosher with me. He said, you can you can do what you got to do. We can be hanging on by three. But the moment that you show me you can't, you're incapable of, of steering a boat. Oh, okay. here's break loose. Yes. So okay. if you just tuned in, you're tuned into Looking for Love, and we talk about bridging the gap between Generation X men and women to make sure that we can hear each other, that we can really have conversations that will make our relationships thrive. So Lamar is here from a male perspective. I'm here from a female perspective, and not to argue, but to teach each other, to, to actually glean off of each other's knowledge of the opposite sex. So we're not here to wage war against each other. We're not here to turn men against women or women against men. A lot of the internet is doing that right now. But what we're trying to do, we're trying to change the game so that we can have healthy relationships. 
with people our own age, because a lot of men and women are going outside of our ages, whether it be extremely older or whether it be extremely younger, but we're not meshing as a generation and that's a problem. So we have to talk about these things, whatever it may be, sex, money, hobbies, whatever it is, we're gonna talk about it. And we appreciate you guys sending in your questions. We appreciate your comments. We appreciate TikTok, y'all are going crazy over the giving head thing. And you know, it, I'm learning because again, I want the women to, on TikTok, I want you to look at the videos and the men. I want you to look at the videos where the men are speaking. Like Lamar said, a man wants to have head all the time. Like a man needs that. And the men were, and I said 90% of men and Lamar said, okay, you can say that, but it ain't the truth. And then when I went and looked at the comments of hundreds of men, they were like, no, 99.999%. So <laughs> a woman, I have to believe that now. Like Lamar said it and they said yes. So women, I want us to go to these comments when Lamar is speaking and to see what the men are saying. And men, I want you to go when I'm speaking and the women are saying, yes, this is what we need. This is how we feel. If 200 of us are saying yes, there's truth to it. So we have to listen, ladies. And some of y'all was like, well, if a woman doesn't want to do it, she doesn't have to, right? And if she doesn't want to do it, she doesn't have to. But he has the right to leave you. That or is if you ain't doing it, he's going to go elsewhere. He's going to go get it from somewhere else. So mm -hmm. you, you are basically saying when you know your man, you started off giving. Yeah. And then you stopped. You got to be able to have conversations and talk things through it, too. So it, when you stop doing certain things on both sides, you got to be able to ask for it. And that's just being transparent in your relationship. And that, that requires growth and trust. So, you know, that's that's what everyone should just strive to. So just a reminder, ladies, sometime in the next day or two or absolutely before Wednesday. And you, you guys will let Trey know. Get, go Just go sit down with your man, watch TV. And as you do it, as he's turned on the TV, as we watch a movie together, put his head in your lap and just rub his head and see what kind of conversation that sparks, what kind of feeling that sparks, what kind of man you get. Well, because you can, you, can, you can humble him. You can humble him really quick. And I'm giving you guys some insider <laughs> tips because this might save somebody's marriage. It might re-spark something. It might have a spawn a conversation, you know, and... You know, if you guys, you know, if you are married and you're looking at, you know, looking at looking for love, y'all should watch it together. It's going to spawn some great conversations. And yes. you, guys, you guys will grow from that. I guarantee yeah. you will grow. Everything we everything we say is not the, the God, the gospel. It's just our perspective. But it will spawn a conversation that will be healthy for you guys. And Finley said, you have to do a lot of things you don't want to do. You do. Men, men do it all the time. True. Women do it all the time, too. But, you know, we got to do things that we don't want to do to please our partner. Men go shopping with us and sit there while we try 999,000 pair of shoes. And they be like, oh, yeah, those is cute. And while they're watching the game on their phone, but they're there. They don't want to be there, but they're there. So, ladies, again, we have to really go look at these comments that the men are making. And these are your cheat notes, because if you know what men are saying, you have the playbook to keep your relationship right. So if you're not, again, we're not going back to the giving head thing, but if you see all of these men saying it and you're not doing that, you have a problem on your hands. Yeah, you I mean, you're, you're not, you're like, then you start having to, you have to ask yourself, is that why all of my boyfriends left? Is that why I didn't have a healthy relationship? If that's why my house is in an uproar right now, is that why my husband is checked out? Is that why my husband does coming home late, later and later? Yeah. And and vice versa, dudes. Don't let us leave y'all out because some of y'all. Oh, but I mean, if, if women would just give a little bit, give a little bit of that power up and just be like, you know what? I'm gonna do it his way. But let me give give yourself 30 days. Do it his way. You know, if if he if he's not, if you don't have a plan, sit down with him. Say, listen, we're gonna let you have it. We're going to do everything you say, how you want to do it and see if he can leave because it's going to put him on the hot seat if he has a plan. Then, OK, they be like, hey, listen, you don't have a plan. What, what, right. what are we doing here? And right. That's, that's sponsor more conversations. And that, that's going to that's going to require him to grow. 
And you don't do it in a challenging way to belittle him. But I mean, just sit down and have a healthy conversation. Listen, I want our, our, our relationship to go to the next level. I want to give you X amount of control over this household to lead us in a direction that's going to feed your manhood. What's our plan? That's a good one. I like it. So Sim Seema said, I'll be single for life then. <laughs> Seema. <laughs> oh, so oh, she's not giving head. Okay. No, she's not. I hey, don't, that's I, her preference. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. It's right. I mean, as long as she understands her fate. That's okay. Married 25 years. Head didn't make him. Uh oh, hold on. Hold on for one second. You had, you had to get the funny me. Yeah, hold on. Married twenty married over 25 years. Head didn't make him not cheat. So single works. No. Well, again, that means, that means you didn't do it enough or good enough. Cause was married. no, was married twenty five years. I get it, and we're not saying that's the only thing. We're not saying that is some. That's the only thing that will make a relationship dissolve. We're saying that all of these things. Cheating is a symptom of a bigger problem. Head didn't make him not cheat. No, cheating is a symptom of a bigger problem. You just have to look, and we're not saying that it's your responsibility that your spouse cheated on you. It is your it, it is your responsibility to think for yourself. Where was the breakdown in the relationship so the same thing doesn't happen to me moving forward with the next person? That's all. I Thanks. look back on my relationships, and I look at myself to say what I don't want to bring to the next relationship. He may never work on himself. Or he may never do it, but you have to look at yourself and understand that there were some things that I did wrong and there were some things that I didn't do that I don't want to bring to my next relationship. Yeah, hey, remember that handle. That might that sound like sound like my ex-wife talking. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Hold on, let me see. <laughs> it's Seema Me So Me. Seema Me So Me. Yes, mm. it's five to one. Some women ain't gonna have men. Might be, a, might be a burner account. Oh, the same thing it took to get your baby hooked. It's going to take the same thing to keep her to keep her hold. Yeah, so our time is up before we get started. <laughs> but <laughs> we're not even going to mess around with the head tonight. Yeah, 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 yeah. We left, but yeah, we, 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 Friday. <laughs> we need to have the after hours Friday. Yeah, we're going to do that. I couldn't do it this Friday because I had to okay. launch my my um community okay. but we'll see you guys next we'll see you guys on friday because we're going to do the follow-up friday we'll be live on instagram and we'll be talking about this and i'll put some snippets up of the most part where people talk the most about it on the different platforms and we'll be answering your questions your comments your thoughts your reactions and we're just going to have a good time with it so we thank you guys so much tonight for tuning in to looking for love on the new you nation network we're here every wednesday 8 p.m eastern standard time just breaking down this relationship thing in a cordial way without fighting, arguing, and disrespecting and disregarding each other's opinions. And that's the way we get to healthy relationships. So what's your final thought, Lamar? Uh, personal growth. Just keep pushing yourself. Make yourself uncomfortable. You know, um, there's going to be some tough times, but just, just don't stop. Just keep pushing. And the growth is going to be a beautiful thing. So just just where just don't feel like where you are. If you feel like you're stuck, just keep walking. Keep walking. Keep pushing forward. I guarantee you, you it will get better and you'll you'll be happy. You'll be better for it. I'm just going to say be the best highest version of yourself. Just just do the right thing in your relationship. Come into the relationship being real, ready, willing and able to serve your spouse. And hopefully the person that you're with comes in with the servitude attitude as well. So both people are working hard to serve each other instead of always coming in. Gimme, 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 gimme. Walk into that relationship, the best, highest version of yourself with a giving spirit. And I promise you, it will come back to you. And if it doesn't, then you know that this is not the person for you. So we love y'all. Love y'all. Thank you all for tuning in again. Please go and subscribe to our YouTube channel, the new U Nation Network YouTube channel, New U Nation, N E W Y O U N A T I O N, New U Nation Network YouTube channel. And we'll see you guys next week at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Looking for Love. Peace and blessings. Mm -hmm.